Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 is so much better than Season 1 in every way. The art style has changed to one that I think is much more fitting, the characters are so well written and the story hits you like a train. And all of this is really saying a lot, because Season 1 was also amazing. But let's take this fight as an example. Season 1 was full of action with a bunch of different fights, but I think all of those pale in comparison to the fight in Episode 7, Mahito vs Mekamaru. It's kind of incredible how they managed to make one of the best parts of the entire story so far about Mekamaru? Who? Not Yuji, Sukuna, or even Gojo, although we'll get to Gojo in a second, but Mekamaru? Yo, who is this nigga, man? <laughs> and it's all done in one episode? This was a character that I didn't have any particular strong emotions towards beforehand, but it's now one of my favorite characters in Jujutsu Kaisen. When we first got introduced to him, I did sympathize with him and his backstory. He was born differently to everybody else, and all he wanted to be was normal. And he would even go to the lengths of betraying the people he cares about to achieve this. I like how even though he's the traitor, he still is not on the side of the bad guys. He's risking everything to get what he wants, and after he does, the first thing he thinks about is getting back to Jujutsu High, telling them all he knows about Mahito and Geto, and meeting Miwa, the one person he's formed a bond with, who also has like 5 minutes of screen time. When asked why Mekamaru is the prime suspect for being the traitor, the reason isn't because he accidentally gave away a hint or anything like that, in fact, he wasn't even suspicious. The reason is simply that everybody else wasn't suspicious. And I think that line alone speaks volumes about his character. He didn't interact with the other classmates in a friendly way because he didn't want to, rather because he felt he wasn't good enough to do so with the way he was, which is why he urgently felt like he needed to fix his body. It makes me remember the fight he had with Panda in the first season, where Panda tells him that he hasn't had a single thing in common with humans since he was born, but he doesn't care. If anything, he's even less normal than Mekamaru is. But Mekamaru just can't accept this, and so he still tries to get his body back and has to pay the consequences. And this is when we get to the fight itself, which like I said is the best looking fight in Jujutsu Kaisen and perfectly highlights why this art style was the way to go. I mean look at this bro, this shit buzzing. I have to give huge props to the director of this season because he absolutely killed it. There's been a decent amount of people upset about the art style change who don't like the simplistic art style and prefer the season 1 art style, which is fine. People don't like change and that's not gonna change. But I think it's pretty undeniable how much better these types of more simplistic art styles styles are for the animation itself. The animators don't have to draw like a million little details on every single frame and can instead just focus on actual animation. Of course, this doesn't mean that I prefer the show to just be like stick men, but take a look at these two clips as an example. Maybe you preferred the first one, and again, that's okay, but it's just so janky compared to the second one. This is why all your favorite fights from Naruto all have an art style similar to this. And I think this fight also greatly benefits from it. Although I do have to question what Mekamaru's plan was, because at first, it looks like he escapes, and I'm like, okay, that's fair, makes sense. But then he has the audacity to say, <laughs> He had successfully escaped, but decided to go back for the kill. I think I was just so surprised to see a side character like Mekamaru have the balls to go against the two main antagonists. Even they're surprised, like, Is this nigga serious? But a few moments later, he says something weird. So, you know that you can't win, and that you need to get Gojo's help if you want to win. So then, why did you decide to fight them when you were already able to run away just fine? But okay, maybe he's going to try to escape outside of the veil and contact Gojo this time because after all, according to himself, that's the only way he can win this. But no, he fights them anyway. And after he thinks he's killed Mahito, he says, okay, time to kill Geto now. What? Seriously, this was so strange. I don't know why he contradicted himself so much, but anyway. Aside from that little detail, this fight is absolutely bonkers. Mechs are not really my cup of tea, but I thoroughly enjoy this. The voice actor did give me some PTSD, but I tried to ignore that. There's so many twists and turns. One moment you think Mahito has the upper hand, then all of a sudden Mekamaru pulls out a crazy trick out of his sleeve and completely flips it. This is something Bleach does in like literally every fight in the entire show. It works because you actually don't know who is gonna win, which again, I just have to stress enough is an incredible feat because we're talking about the two main antagonists 
versus this guy. What is that? What is that? I think it's so weird how this whole part feels so isolated to the rest of the story. We see Itadori and the others try to find him at the start, but after that, they never speak of it again. We never see anybody's reaction to Mekamaru's death or their reaction to him being the traitor. I guess that's just another way to show how isolated he really was to everyone. And once again, the animation is just out of this world. It really felt like they went above and beyond for this one. And I'm continued to be amazed by the director when he's giving us transitions like this. I think that's the first thing I noticed when I started the season. The first episode is so well directed, I was just blown away. Some of these shots and angles are so creative and refreshing, this shit looks like it was made by Jesus. They must have been running this bitch like a sweatshop, but people are mad because of the ghosting and dimming. Just Shut the fuck up! Every shot of Gojo in the first arc is just perfect. I, it's like they spent twice as much time drawing him compared to everybody else. I really don't know what it is. They literally just slapped some sunglasses on him and he looks like five times better. Gojo was already one of my favorites, but they made me care for him as a character so much more. He's not just the overpowered character anymore. In fact, I really like how they made him being overpowered a part of his character arc. It's kind of like how Saitama is depressed because he can't find anyone that is nearly as strong as him. Because because Gojo is so ridiculously strong, it creates a gap between him and the people he's close to. If we didn't get this arc beforehand, I don't think I would have cared nearly as much about the things he does in the Shibuya arc. So overall, Jujutsu Kaisen has actually just like blown me away. Much like another brand new anime that just came out this season, and you have to check out this video to see more about that.